Hey, Takeover Church, thank you so much for checking out today's message, whether it's on podcast or on YouTube. We are so grateful that you are here. We pray it blesses you and encourages you and that you will like, share, and subscribe across all Takeover platforms. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless. We love you guys.
break every single chain this morning, God. Nothing is too big for you. Nothing, Lord. Literally, the worst thing that we've done is you call us whole because we are saved by your son. We're not deserving, but God, I just pray that each person in this room will just lose their minds this morning in the best way possible because you've touched them. So, Lord, let's... Let's just move this church, but let's move the city through this church. Yes. So I just pray blessing over blessing over each one of you. And we're going to leave this song. And if you feel led, just raise a hallelujah and whatever that looks like for you. Sitting down, standing up, clapping, dancing. I don't care. Let's just lay it down, guys. Jesus.
gets me hyped up like that. Yes. Like just screaming for Jesus that he's going to come and change the world. And that third song, I was, I was really in it. I was worshiping and I was trying to think about what I was going to what I was gonna say when I got up here, what I was going to what I was gonna pray over. And that fourth song just came in and I was like, you know what? We're just going to declare that there are chains falling on This is a, a, the time in our service when you know, we, we it's, our, it's called prayer and praise. And this is a time when we just stand with each other in prayer and believe that the Lord is going to answer those prayers. And he's going to break some chains off. And then we're going to praise on the other side when we see those chains fall off. So with that being said, if you all can just stand with us and pray for our brothers and sisters that are just in desperate need of Jesus to show up of their life, yes, and then praise with us on the other side. That sound yes. Yes. Awesome. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you are the chain breaker, that yes. we come yes. to you with our prayers, with our, our, our crying out to you, that you break those chains off, that you answer those prayers, that you yes. come through. Jesus, we have somebody that is, is just asking for productive and peaceful wedding planning, Jesus. We know that that can be a stressful event in life, even though it's supposed to be full of joy, it can be stressful, and we just pray that that is peaceful and productive, and that everything goes off without a hitch, Lord. Lord, this, we have a card that just says, it's asking for prayers for a friend that is just going through a lot. <laughs> I feel like this past year, this season of life for so many people has just felt like a lot. So we just pray for peace and comfort over this person specifically and over anybody that has been feeling just overwhelmed with life, with the season that they've been in. God, that you would just offer them peace and provision and stability, Jesus, because that's what you do. Come on. Jesus, we have we have a couple different cards in here dealing with with marriages or separations or ex ex partners and children being involved, Lord, and, and custody in that type of situation. Jesus, we know that you are the God of restoration and healing. Even in situations when, when those two people aren't going to be back together, there can still be restoration within a relationship. And we know that your will, what you want for us is to not be in conflict and not to have spirits of division and evil within people that are driving families apart. So we pray over these situations, Lord, that you would just offer healing, that you would offer restoration, that in your name, people would turn and do a 180 and start thinking with your spirit instead of just with, with human minds and emotions. Oh, and that healing would come. Jesus, we have so many parts for healing. Jesus, this one is just a prayer. It just says, prayers that I will become pregnant. Come on. Jesus, you know this individual, and you know that there's not just this one individual that is praying for this. You know that there are multiple people that have been praying for this, for themselves, and this the entire church body has been praying for this, and people as well. You know that this is the desire of their heart because you placed it there. You have been the desire to have a family, Lord. And we just thank you right now in advance for the blessing and the amazing yeah. gift that will be given to them. Because we expect it. Because yeah. we know what you say about us now. When you give us something on the inside of our heart, when you give us something that, that you plan there, that is a desire that is from you, that you deliver on that you don't leave us hanging, Jesus. We just pray for these people that that prayer would be answered, that they, they would have a child, and it would just be amazing. Yeah. Awesome. 
three years ago this week. Just prayers for complete healing in her body, continued restoration, continued recovery, God. Open our surgeries now, Joe. But we know that with you, God, complete healing and restoration is possible. We pray for that complete healing. We pray for a mother who, who may have had pink eye. Lord, you, we, we know that infections are not of you. Infections are from the enemy, they're from hell. And you've called our bodies to be completely restored, completely aligned with what you called us to do. So we pray for complete restoration and healing in this body and these eyes. Lord, personally, myself, I've also, I'm have also i also need of healing. Uh, just been experiencing migraines and, and, and headaches and, and things of that nature that are affecting everyday life. God, I pray that just in front of a room full of witnesses, God, that you offer complete healing and restoration to myself as well as others. So we know you're able. We have somebody that is praying again for family salvation. That their family would come to know you. This is something that we've been praying over for a long time, God. And we are going to continue praying until they come home and they see you, Jesus. We pray that you would just, you, you would put people in their path that would just impart your knowledge into them, Jesus. We're also praying, this person is also praying that, that you would remove any physical, spiritual, or mental emotional obstacles for people coming to church and that includes your family that you would just any obstacle, any possible excuse any way that somebody could possibly skirt around and get out of it God, that you would shut that down that you would destroy any obstacle that's in the way and that people would show up Jesus, they would encounter you because of that and then finally the last one here for some healing is Somebody's father um, is having dental surgery on Tuesday, and it's pretty extensive. Jesus, we pray for complete healing in that mouth once that surgery is complete. We pray for steady hands for the doctors, knowledge for the doctors, preparation. God, that they would know exactly what they're supposed to do, and they would execute exactly how they're supposed to execute, God. And that the healing process would be swift. Amen. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Faithful Church said. Amen. Guys, thanks for staying with us in prayer. We have some praises, so if you guys just want to shout and scream and just give a praise here. We just have somebody that says, thankful for another Sunday with my church man and some baby people. We have a couple cards here. Um, both praises up for an awesome ladies leadership retreat. That's a dope name. Ladies leadership retreat this past weekend. Yesterday, for Friday night, Saturday, a bunch of our core ladies went and, and prayed and just you know cast vision for this next year. And it was awesome. And we are so thankful that they were able to do that. praises for somebody just that just says a successful surgery and she's able to walk without pain for the first time since April. And then this one uh, doesn't have a name, but I don't know who it is, but it just says buying a house, which is awesome in itself. So that's awesome. With Jesus and experiencing his love in a new way. Yeah. And this last one here just says, I've been blessed with an exciting new job. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for standing with us and praying and praising. Uh, if you have little ones, kiddos, you can be dismissed right now with Shandy and Nikki. And if you guys would just give it up for Pastor Adrienne as she gives us a word around her offering. Yes, oh, yeah. everybody, you can have a seat this morning. 
Um, can we just put it, our hands together one more time for the worship? Yeah. Every time I just happen to glance over here and I see Elijah singing, it just makes me yes. grin. Yeah. It's just so exciting to see. And also Kyle over here, yeah. not only is he playing the, the guitar, uh, the bass, but he was also singing. And I just, I love that. I love that we have a, a church full of people, full of guys who aren't afraid to lift their voice and praise the Lord your God. Yeah, so Isn't that awesome? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I wanted to speak this morning with my offering about faithfulness and the security of God's love and what that looks like. And like Scott said, uh, we had the incredible opportunity, the, the leadership, the ladies here at church, to get away for the weekend and, and cast vision for 2021 and what we're hoping that that looks like and, and the dreams and the things that we know that God is stirring inside of us and, and seeing those things become reality. Yeah. Not just for us, but for, for everybody here. And, um, to talk about 2021, we had to talk about 2020. And <laughs> I my mind is blown how we can look at 2020 on paper, it, and it can look like <laughs> such a such a dumpster fire. As I like to say, a dumpster fire rolling down a hill into a fireworks factory, and it, it just it was so insane the the crushing that people felt, and 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 the pressing and and to hear what should have been just a totally devastation of a year the praises and all of the amazing things that happened for each and every single one of us in 2020. Like, it was more good. There was more good that came out of it than bad. And, and it's wild to think about it that way, but when we fully surrender the aspects of our life, all of the aspects of our life, what God can do with that surrender and that trust is insane. <laughs> he will change our families. Yeah. He will change our financial situations. Yeah. It's because it's changing the condition of our hearts to be in a posture of surrender and of trust. In 1 John 4, 16, it says, We know how much God loves us, and we put our trust in his love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, yeah. and God lives in them. Yeah, and that's, that, to me, is just so powerful. do not extend forgiveness, if it's worry, if it's anxiety, if it's our finances, if we hate our job, but God is telling us to surrender and to be at peace because we're called to that job for that time. That surrender, he can do more with that than you will ever imagine. Yeah, that's good. And if you have fear around your finances, if you have that, that tight, tight fistedness, it, it says in the Bible that the world of the generous grows larger and larger, and it grows larger and larger inside of us yeah. before we ever see it outside of us. Yeah. So I just want to thank you for your faithfulness to this house. There are so many who, who give faithfully, and even those who give on top of, of what we're called to give, which is that 10%. You know, last week we had a family who gave who gave five grand that was not yeah. just laid on the ground. Like, it was a sacrifice. Yeah. And, and to me, that is so encouraging because they're saying that without you, God, there's no way that we can do this. Yeah. There's no way. But we trust you. And we know that we are called to do this. And this is to support the church and your word in the world going out and changing the lives of those around us. Is that not incredible? Yeah. 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 Do you not want to be part of that? Yeah. God knows that I do. I'm just going to pray this morning that he would bless your faith with giving. As you know, you can give online or in the back, or you can text to give. And he's he's going he's gonna to do so much more with that surrendered heart than you could ever imagine. Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, Father God, that we have this book of wisdom and knowledge that cuts away and adds on to our lives and to our spirit, helping us to be the men and the women that you have called us to be, Jesus. I just pray this moment that we would be faithful to the call that you put on us, regardless of the area of our life that it's in. Lord, that we would just fully surrender to you and the changing that you're doing 
that you, we would see fruit in the year 2021. We would see insane gifts of the Spirit break out. Father, out of our trust and the knowledge of your love. In Jesus' name, and, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, would you put your hands together for church news as we have Zach and Scott come up? What's up, Cheryl? Oh, what up? What's up, Doc? Okay. He's a creature of habit, I guess. That's all right. He, does, he, likes, he likes that side. That's all right. What's up? This is church. What are you doing, man? Oh, my gosh. All right, let's start. You stay over there now. Don't come back over this way. All right? Okay, welcome to Church News, y'all. So we're just give you guys the latest updates of what's going on, all right? Yeah, That's true. Yeah. As always, follow us on social media to stay updated. Our crews that we have going on, tell, tell. we have our boys and our babe crew, this all right? Week. This week, this oh, Wednesday, yeah. if you're not in the boy, boys or the babes crew, get in it. Yeah. I can't stress this enough. It is so crucial that you do life with other people. All right? it's, it's insane. My man Tyler's going to be there. That's right. Even if, even if he wasn't going to be, I just made it. I forced his hand. Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be sick. Just make sure you show up, all right? We also have other crews uh, such as Porn Free, Tea Time, and Bible Study. Okay? Oh, yeah. If you struggle with the, uh, with an addiction to pornography, get in the Porn Free crew. It's so crucial to break free from that. Amen. If you are a mother in the place and you want some time to go chill with some other moms, tea time is the time for you. Yeah. Um, and then Bible study, if you want to learn more about scripture and your Bible and what it says for you and about you, get in the Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. Learn about the scripture and what it says. Okay? Hey. Also, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but there could potentially be another uh, variation of tea time coming. Oh, but, but for some dads, and it might be a different kind of tea, like a, uh, a little a golf tea maybe. So, that might be a thing. We might see what happens with that. That's a, a, little, a little plug spot for us to get excited, okay? I'm telling you, I'm a Dr. Kid. Surfers. I'm gonna hit a few things, but uh, we got the people set up chairs, we got the host crew, we got the musicians, yeah. and from the, the tech team. But we, we really want people to serve uh, and the kids right now. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, high demand is like the, the more times, the more people we have to serve, the more times that the people, you guys, can be in the yes. service and just, just yeah. filling yes. up. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're doing their best, they're doing an incredible job just actually giving the kids substance to, uh, you know, not just the babysitting time, but to actually grow them in the Lord. Yes, it's absolutely. Yes. It's, it's crazy some of the things that the kids come out and show you. Yeah. Um, but if you have any inclination, this is the time, this is the sign. Yeah. To just do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. It's awesome. Absolutely. Alright, next up. Uh oh. We have a giveaway, dog. We have a giveaway. Dude, we have Matt said, hey Scott, go grab some uh, shirts and give them away today. And I was like, well, I'm gonna give away a ton of stuff today, I guess. Oh, so, yeah. I a bunch. Wow. so Josh got we've got so, uh, we've got multiple so, shirts. So, so, he's so they're like giving away all my stuff. Um okay. we got some Holy Spirit heavyweights. Yeah.
But those are your giveaways for today. You know, if you need a different size t-shirt or something, let us know. We can, we can switch it out with you. But uh, yeah, enjoy those free gifts, y'all. Yeah. Uh, for prayer, we, we're, we're doing it over here now. We're going to have a few people um, just just come. Whatever it might be, we, we are a church that believes in physical healing. That yeah, God shows up and he does yeah. stuff. We already have a testimony this morning about God, God showing up. Uh, a testimony on Wednesday about somebody who just, just felt like they're bogged down. They're having a hard time. They just wanted to connect with God a little better. Got to pray for her. She felt like she was literally taller. She oh, just walked oh, away from us. She just felt like she just like, like, like when people are like, Right. <laughs> you know, behind the couch, that, that basically happened. Yes. You know, yes. God's awesome. good. He loves her yes. like crazy. So whatever it might be, like we're believing in high, high, high expectation yes. that yeah. God is gonna gonna do something. Yeah. So yes. we'll come over and uh, let's do that after service. Yes. Absolutely. Well, y'all, that is it for church news. If you take notes, which you should be, get your notes out. Get ready to, to jot down some notes here so you can look back later. And if y'all could just help me in welcoming the yeah, one, on. the only, our very own lead pastor, oh. Matt McClure, as we continue to see his great Take over, church. How good is our Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. He's better than that. Take over, church. How is our Jesus? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Good morning. How we doing? Good morning. Hey. Awesome. Fantastic. Man, take over worship. I don't even. I don't even know what I need to preach. What a what an incredible morning. We could just play, break every chain for the next yeah. two hours, and uh, solid. The place could have burned down around us and everything. Okay. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Everybody doing good this morning though. Yeah. Do you love your Bible though? Yeah. Yes. So we ready for the Word of God though. Yes. Fantastic. Yo, where are my single people at? Put your hands up. Take a look around. I'm just, I'm just playing. Just playing. Just playing. Sorry, I haven't got to pull that one out in a minute. And I uh, had to. See what you look. God is good. All the time. Especially today. Fantastic. Well, we are continuing our series. Continuing. Continuing our series. Breaker. Somebody just say it with your chest. Say, Breaker. 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 And like we've been doing every single week, we actually have something that we have called the Breaker Creed, which every single message in this series we are going to recite beforehand because we are going old school. Yeah. We're going back to banners and, and flag throwing and all sorts of stuff, snake handlings on Tuesdays. Like, we're going all the way back. Just kidding. No, there's no snake handling. Um, but I just love a good creed and I really felt led like hey we're going into 2021 and 2020 couldn't break us because we're a room we are a church we are a body we are a move of God that are breakers we don't get broken we do the breaking amen and so this is the breakers creed y'all ready to recite it with me yeah. all right man Eric there it is the breaker creed ready yes a breaker is a child of God a follower of Jesus a temple of the Holy Spirit a breaker desires the things above a breaker understands the need for breaking a breaker willfully gives themselves to breaking a breaker seeks the anointing of God that only comes through the breaking of God the breaker's anointing is the ability to break through any spiritual hindrance that would impede upon Notes, get ready, ready for the the message. Breaker week three. The title is a fire breaker. A fire breaker. And like we've been doing this whole time, we are going to go all the way back to the Old Testament. Y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready for that word of God? Yeah. Gosh, who just loves the Bible? Me. I, yeah. I do. Come on, somebody. Daniel 3, 10 through 18. I'm coming out of the New Living Translation this morning. Um, if you got a Bible, cool, turn there. If not, turn on the Sky Bible. But Daniel 3, 10 through 18. Say you're ready when you're ready. 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 Come on. I got three of us that are ready. That's good enough for me. Ready. Verse 10. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they hear the sound of the horn, flute, I don't even know what a zither is, a lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, 
That decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whom you have put in charge of the providence of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods. They do not worship this golden statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? How many of you are grateful that is not your name? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship my golden statue I have set up? Question mark. I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be immediately, immediately thrown into a blazing furnace, and then what God will be able to rescue you from my power. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we were thrown into the blazing furnace, then God, whom we serve, is able, he's what? Able. He's what? Able. Able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship that gold statue you have set up. All right, we're going to pray and see the Lord do something good. Yeah. Fantastic. Father God, we just thank you so much for this morning. God, we ask right now in this moment, Father God, that you would just allow your Holy Spirit to drop into this place, God. That what you started in worship, God, we heard those chains falling, God. We ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that your Holy Spirit would just fill this room more chains would fall, more mindsets would be repaired, God, more hearts would be postured towards you. We want the thickest sense of you in this place from front to back, from corner to corner, from side to side, Right now, God, we are not interested in breathing oxygen. We want to breathe you in. Yeah. Right now, Father God, we ask that you would just be above everything in this room. You'd be above our wonders about the football score afterwards, God. You'd be above our thoughts and our ideas, God. You'd be above whatever anxieties or worries we walked in, God. Today, Lord, if we were cloaked and clothed in fear today, we want to be cloaked and clothed in you. So right now, God, continue the good work you started during worship and change our lives to look more like your son, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, a faithful church said. Amen. 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 Come on. A fire breaker. Now, y'all know, we've talked about this. I love having so much more room on stage, by the way. Can you put these things here? And so now I can just, like, run, you know? Uh, but 2021, we're two weeks deep into it, right? Two weeks in, starting our third week. And how many of y'all know 2020 just fouled this year? <laughs> like, it's been great, great already. Like, things are nuts. Places are worked down. Like, things are happening in our country, in our world, in our very state. We got people preparing. I'm not political about this. Don't worry. I'm getting, I'm getting to where we're going with this. But we got all these things that are happening in our cap the capital. They're setting up all these fences. And there's armed men. And all of these things are happening. And we're just like, I thought... I thought we were done. My New Year's resolution was we were done with 2020. Like, what is taking place right now? And as I started praying and, and asking God, like, what do, what do we say? What do we do? Where, where do we go? What, is, what do we need to preach about on Sunday? And I just kept hearing the word fire. And I'm like, God, I'm just seeing a lot of fire. I'm just, don't tell me that word. Like, I'm just seeing everything burning down right now. I see families being divided. I see people falling into uh, fear and anxiety. I see suicide rates at an all-time high. I just see everything, not just being shaken down, but being burned down. I was like, God, what do you, what do you mean a fire? And I really just got the sense that he was like, I want to break the fire. I want to break the fire. I want to instill in you such a faith, such a conviction, such an anointing that all over your life you would be a fire breaker. That when you walk into a furnace, fire gets burned. Yeah. 
that you would be a kind of person, that you would be walking a blaze, sleeping a blaze, that you would be a flame in the place today, that you would leave here as a fire breaker. Yeah. And as I began to research, because this is what I do, I googled and I typed in fire breaker. Maybe there's something significant about that. Maybe that means something. And kind of like last week, we talked about a circuit breaker, a fire breaker. Fire breaker is a cloak, it's a jacket, it's a material, it's a blanket. It is a material that is thrown over somebody, worn by somebody, that literally has the ability to dead the fire around it. Literally will not only protect you, but it will allow you to breathe the air you wish to breathe. It will protect you, it will break the fire around you, it will break the fire from getting to you, and it will stop and it will prevent while everything else may be burning down around you, when you are clothed in this material, fire has to die when it comes and connects with you. It's kind of like a windbreaker, but it's a fire. And I was like, God, if that's what you want to do and take over church, then let's do it. If that's what you want to do with me, then let's do it. If that's what this thing is going to look like, then let's do it. God, set me so ablaze that I do not care that my beard is weird, that I do not care that I don't care about man's opinion. I don't care about social media posts, that I just do not care what is going on on CNN or Fox News or whatever other bloody news station you tune into, God. I don't want to care about these things, God. I want this fire-breaking anointing so that when everything else is going to hell, we can be deliverers of heaven. Yeah. And I preach to anybody this morning. Yes, sir. So what does that have to do with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Again, I'm so grateful that it's not my name. Those are three really hard, long names to say, and I just can't. Matt has three letters in it. I'm <clears throat> stoked. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and what this has to do with them is, to be honest with you, more than just the furnace, I think these are three boys that really exemplify what it looks like to be a firebreaker, what it looks like to live in such a way that you just do not care about anything aside from God. What you need to know about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is that they are best friends, BFE, forever. They had heartbroken necklaces with a prophet named Daniel. 90s kids know exactly what it's referenced. <laughs> Daniel is an amazing prophet, and these four are just thicker than thieves. They are amazing. This is a friendship. How many of you know that you've got to have some people who are further along than you to spur you on, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so they're best friends with Daniel, and at some point in this passage right before this, Daniel tells King Nebuchadnezzar, he goes, these three boys, you need to trust all your affairs to them. You need to trust them. And so while we just read what we read, the background is that these three boys, they work in the kingdom. They work for the king. They have a job, they have a duty, they have a lot of esteem, and they actually handle all of his affairs. Because the prophet Daniel told them to. And so what happens is, you'll kind of see King Nebuchadnezzar do this a few times over this whole entire book. But man, he flip-flops hardcore. That whole phrase about being tossed like the waves in the sea, that's King Nebuchadnezzar, okay? This dude will go from, man, I love God of heaven to I love myself and everybody else in Golden Castle. Like, he goes so fast, just flip-flopping. And so what we see here is that he is, because prior to this, he was with Daniel. He was like, yeah, Daniel, your God is God. Your God is God. And then suddenly, human nature kicks in, and Daniel's God's not enough for King Nebuchadnezzar. He's got to have his own God. He's got to have his own thing constructed. And so King Nebuchadnezzar, he makes this golden statue. Just a golden statue. Because you imagine just being so full of yourself that you would construct something to worship out of ex just an exceedingly uh, inherent uh, value, such as gold. 
Like you just took something that has so much monetary value in this world and you constructed something that doesn't even have a name, doesn't have an image, it's just called the golden statue because you're so arrogant. And so what he ends up doing is he says, every day, whenever I feel like it, it's not a set time. You don't look at the sundial and go, okay, it's four o'clock on the rock, I guess we're trying to time to bow and worship this golden statue. No, no. Whenever there is a sound, the trumpet, the lyre, whatever a zither is, if you know what a zither is, tell me afterwards, okay? I will. That's amazing. Thank you, Ethan. But whenever a trumpet or a drum or whatever the king's choosing sets off his kingdom, every person is called to bow and worship this human man made, man made golden statue. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're obviously repping the takeover Holy Spirit heavyweight shirts <laughs> way back when. That's right. And guess what? They weren't cool with that. That wasn't something they were willing to do. They are best friends with the prophet Daniel. They are some Holy Spirit heavyweights. They know who God is. They know the God of Israel. They know who is actually the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And can we just pause real quick? And I just want to encourage you people in the room who I know has some crazy, uh, crazy, crazy judge uh, court stuff going on. And I just want to tell you guys, I'm not going to say your names. I'm going to look at you in your direction. God is above every governmental figure, including judges. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you know. Yeah. I don't care about subpoenas. I care about Scripture. And all of His promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. Praise God. The rest of us, we can be in the dark about that. You don't need to know. That is just something the Lord needed to make very clear this morning to two individuals. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're not cool with this. And what ends up happening is they are brought before King Nebuchadnezzar, and they are propositioned. They are asked. They are demanded. They are threatened. And death is immediately certain. All of this is laid before them, and King Nebuchadnezzar goes, I heard you refuse to bow. I'm told you have refused to bow. To my statue, harp and lyre went off. The zither made a weird noise. Things were happening in my kingdom. Why did you not bow and worship my golden statue? And I think that's a part where we need to pause this morning where we need to begin to ask ourselves as Takeover Church, as a Christian, as a Jesus follower in 2021, this year, will you bow or will you stand? Will you bow or will you stand? What are you willing to bow for and what are you willing to stand for? What are you willing to bow for and what are you willing to stand for? Because it's in this moment that somebody who's above them, an oppressor, has things going towards them, threats, death is immediately, it's right in front of them, they see the furnace, they are placed before it, and the question is proposed to them, why did you not bow? Well, as firebreakers, you got to know today that you bow before one name, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you are not God the Son, God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, my knees ain't touching the ground. Amen. My knees are not touching the ground. My head is not bowing. But so many of us, so many of us, when we are positioned, when we find ourselves in this place where it's called to either bow or stand for something, so often we find ourselves bowing for things that are completely unworthy of the price that was paid for you to bow for. Completely unworthy. You see, oppressors come in many shapes and sizes, don't they? Many forms. Not all oppressors are wearing crowns or carbon-based life forms such as humans. Often the oppressors that you and I will face may not be wearing a crown or lead a kingdom. But also the oppressors we face will will be some sort of temptation. Will be some sort of slander or gossip or opinion of man. 
often the oppressor that will face. And yes, it can be a carbon-based life form such as another human. In the workplace or in your family, somebody who wants the Lord over you, wants to hold your past against you, wants to remind you of your failures. Then it's in these moments we have to decide and resolve within ourselves, am I going to bow to temptation or am I going to stand for God? Am I going to bow to my oppressor or am I going to stand for God? So many of us, we find ourselves in this position where we are feeling pressed, where we are feeling the heat, where we are feeling the walls closing in around all sides. us. We feel like the pressure is going to break us. We feel like death is imminent. We feel like we have no way out. And when we feel like we have no way out, we get cagey. We get cagey. When we feel like we have no way out, we begin to bow and knee to things that we never thought we would bow and knee to. Man, money's getting tight. You better steal something. Man, it's just getting hard. Hard in my marriage. It doesn't seem like there's any reconciliation in sight. But I got all these feelings and these desires. Suddenly you bow and knee to adultery, a place that you never could have seen yourself bowing and knee to. So many of us, the second temptation sounds the alarm, a desire comes, a feeling comes upon us. We go running to our master, his name is pornography. And we bow and knee in a moment. And we didn't plan to, to be there, but we also planned not to be there. And we find ourselves living a life where we do far more bowing than we do standing. Because as Christians, when we get pressed on all sides, when we feel like it's coming down around us, when we feel like everything is burning down, so often we are faced with this moment. Do we bow or do we stand? Do we fight or do we flight? And so often, fight or flight does not work out for us. We have this mentality where it's like, I'll bow today, repent tomorrow. I'll concede today, repent tomorrow. I'll bow today and live tomorrow. And we just get through and we scratch that itch. We make that decision. We pay the bill. We fulfilled that desire that's just been coming on so strong. And we go, well, I can stand tomorrow. I just can't stand right now. The weight is too big. The itch is too strong. The temptation is too mighty. And we end up bowing for things that should be bowing to us. I preach to anybody this morning. Christians, we are designed to fight from our knees, not bow on them to things that could never purchase your soul. I see so many people right now in 2021, we are just bowing and conceding to social media posts. We're getting in stupid arguments. <laughs> We're fighting battles on platforms that we were never intended to fight from. We are bowing because it looks like if we don't have an opinion on something, then we're a part of the problem. Right. I'm sorry. Culture in 2021 is an oppressor. Yeah. It's okay to, think, to take things up in prayer before you take them to a platform. And I'm sick and tired of seeing the church fight itself. I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians cannibalize one another. I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians be divided when a church should be united underneath one name. His name is Jesus. But we out here infighting. And it's like, why are you bowing to this? Stand for something. His name is Jesus. Not all oppressor, oppressors wear crowns. But you're not made to bow to them. See, what happens next is something pretty incredible, I think. 
we have this next in the story is these informants, the people who saw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and saw them just carrying on, carrying on in the castle, in the palace, working, serving, doing their job, serving God, living as God followers at the time. And these informants see this and exactly what they say verbatim to the king is, King, there are these three Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the ones that Daniel put in place, that prophet, that crazy guy. They don't bow for your golden statue. In fact, they pay no attention to your golden statue. They pay no attention to your golden statue. And the word says that's when the king went to a rage. That's when Nebuchadnezzar wanted their head. That's when Nebuchadnezzar wanted their allegiance brought before him so he could ring them or kill them. And the informants say, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego pay no attention to your golden statue. Church, I wonder today, what are some golden statues in our life that God is trying to break our concentration on? What are some idols in our lives that God is trying to break our concentration on? What are some idols in our lives? What are some golden statues we've either sold out to or we've constructed ourselves that God is desperately, desperately trying to break our attention with? What is he trying to move in between you for? What is it that we have decided that we have bowed down and we have worshipped at the feet of that God wants to break our attention off of? What golden statues, if you were to honestly take an inventory of your life today, has God broke, has God wanted to break your attention with? Some of us, man, we have made great idols out of our past. Some of us, we have made great idols out of money. Some of us, we have made great idols out of our spouse. Some of us, we have made great idols out of sex and wealth and fame and fortune. We've made great idols out of elections. We've made great idols out of sickness. We've made great idols. We've constructed these amazing, immaculate, incredible, these very big, gorgeous gold statues. And most of the time, we didn't even know that we were constructing them because they just had our attention. Isn't it funny how many things can have your attention without you really it meaning to give it to it? Yeah. How many things throughout the day does your mind just drift to, just go to in that direction? What are some golden statues that God wants to break your attention off of. You see, here's something that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood. They understood this above everything. If God didn't have their attention before the fire, are we going to have God's attention in the fire? If God didn't have my attention before the furnace, am I going to have God's attention in the furnace? Because let me tell you, friends, if God doesn't have your attention before the furnace, God didn't have your attention. If God didn't have your attention, your devotion, your allegiance, your agreement before the furnace, then God never really had your attention, your allegiance, your agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they understood this. They are brought before a furnace because an informant said they paid no, never mind, no attention. The alarms went off. The lyres started playing. The drums started beating. Everybody bowed around them to one idol. And your king, guess what they did, your highness? They paid no attention to it. Friends, whatever you pay attention to, you will ultimately bow before. Whatever you pay attention to, you will ultimately bow before. God, when he makes a breaker, he breaks your attention. When God makes a breaker, he breaks your concentration. When God breaks you out of your attention, 
shifted your allegiance being to other idols and people and things that you have constructed and began to worship, it's going to hurt. It's going to be new. You're going to feel distracted. You're going to feel like you are fighting from beneath. You're going to feel like it's getting hot around you. But that's because God is trying to reprogram you. They paid no attention to your golden statue. It was at that moment their oppressor went to a rage. Friends, can I just say something that I feel like really needs to be said today? Yes. Is that okay with you? Yes. Don't ever apologize for breaking up with an idol. That's good. Don't ever apologize for breaking up with an idol. Some of y'all don't understand what I mean by that. I'm going to say it one more time and then I'm going to expound. Don't ever apologize for breaking up with an idol. So many Christians, we will live beat down to beat down instead of breakthrough to breakthrough because we are spending our time trying to break up with an idol and then we're texting it the next day apologizing for breaking up with it. Hey, I'm sorry, I just can't hang out anymore. You don't owe those people a text message anymore. Hey, I'm sorry, I just can't date you. I can't continue having sex with you. I can't whatever this is what my life needs to look like now. You no longer owe them an apology. You are doing what is most healthy for your soul, what's most healthy for your relationship with Jesus. Your idol was never was never the what was healthy for you. Your idol was never what God intended for you. Don't apologize for breaking up with an idol. No one's going to stand there if they constructed a golden statue and just say, GS, beautiful golden statue. I met somebody new whose name is Jesus. I just can't come to worship him. It's been good. You're shiny. We had a lot of time. But now I've met somebody else. Do you see how ridiculous that is? That's exactly what it looks like. That's exactly what it looks like, what it sounds like, when we begin to make apologies for things that we needed to cut out of our life a long time ago. Yes. When we begin to make apologies for things that never should have had our attention in the first place. These boys understood that. No, 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 no. You don't deserve my attention. God deserves my attention. God deserves my allegiance right now. So many Christians, you will get drawn back in to your golden idols that you have constructed. Your relationships, pornography, your depression, your anxiety. I've actually heard people say, man, I missed the days when I was depressed. Are you, what? It's like being alone when I was depressed. And I'm free. Are you kidding me? Don't apologize. Don't miss. And what do you do? When you miss those days or those moments alone or those desires that you felt, the high you got, whatever it may be, when that feeling comes, we turn our eyes on Jesus. Yeah, that's good. We turn our eyes on Jesus. No golden statue. You don't deserve my attention. You don't deserve my concentration. You didn't pay for my gaze. You didn't pay for my eyes to be upon you. You didn't pay for my soul. You didn't rescue my past. You weighed my past down. You brought my past up and you kept me chained to it. You didn't, res you didn't secure and rescue my future. You didn't bring my marriage to restitution. You didn't do anything except steal my attention off the one who truly deserves it. Yeah. Don't ever apologize for breaking up with idols. That's good, man. I'm sick and tired of seeing Christians fight from underneath. You're fighting from underneath because you were weighed down by these things that you used to worship, that you used to bend the knee at. You were fighting because you were so chained to it. I don't care how far I don't care how far you walk away from an idol. If, you're, if you allow your mind to keep going back to it, whatever has your attention, you will ultimately worship. Yeah. You will ultimately bow to. Yeah. So many Christians, man, we bow to our oppressors 
We bow to our oppressors. But I think what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say in this next part is, is absolutely super necessary. Somebody say super necessary. Super necessary. Super necessary. This is super necessary for what a Christian should live like, should look like, should lead like in their own lives. This is crucial. This is paramount because here is the deal. Your oppressor, whatever his name may be, whatever her name may be, whatever crown she may wear, depression, worry, anxiety, poverty, text. There's something about somebody who understands that God deserves our attention. Because what happens is this. See Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in this moment? The king is declaring all these things. The king says, I will give you one final opportunity. I'll give you one final opportunity. We will sound the harp. We will get the lyre. We will make the noise again. And this is it. Right here. Furnace is hot. Right here before me. We will do it all again. And this is your out. This is your moment. You can escape right here, right now. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have this amazing smug look on their face. Friends, did you know that as a firebreaker, you can take pity on your old idols? Did you know that as a firebreaker, you can have pity on your oppressor? Because here's what happens next. I don't care what it is that you have felt oppression over, okay? Possession over. You can take pity over it because you are a Jesus follower. Because here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they go... Oh, king. Just that pity. Oh, king. Oh, depression. Oh, anxiety. Oh, homegirl that I used to do things with. Oh, my gosh. I don't owe you my attention. And you just get to take pity on it. And here's the thing that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, they say. Oh, king. I don't have to defend myself towards you. They're in front of a furnace. They're about to get burnt to a crisp. Death is imminent. Their time on earth is up. This moment right here, right now, in the natural, looks like all hope is lost. Everything is gone. It's all going to burn down around you and you with it. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they are so certain of who God is, of who God says that they are, of what he says that he can do. They take pity on the king. Could you imagine that? Certain death. You are about to die. You are about to lose your marriage. You are about to lose your job. You are about to lose whatever you find security in. You are about to lose whatever has held you back. Whatever you have profited in life. Because of an oppression. Because of a person. Because of a place, because of a thing, because of a stigma, because of gossip around you. And you just stare that thing in the face and you say, oh, whatever your name is, I don't have to defend myself towards you. Friends, you know why Christians more often than not find themselves bowing to their oppressor? Because we feel like we have to defend ourselves. Right. We have lived our lives as Jesus followers thinking we had to defend ourselves against oppression, against depression, against intimacy issues, against sexual immorality, against desires and temptation, against fear and anxiety. Whatever it is, we have lived our lives just feeling like it was ours to defend against. Do you know what happens when all you do is live on the defense? You're going to get tired. You're going to get tired, you're going to get beat down, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to stand. Yeah. So you know what happens when you live in a posture of defense? You end up bowing. You are in the most defensive position when you are the closest to the ground. And that, my friends, is exactly what your oppressor wants you to do. So many Christians, we get tired and we begin to bow to things we could never imagine that we would bow to because we thought, for whatever reason, maybe it was a pastor who said something wrong and you formed a theology off it, 
Maybe you got something twisted. Maybe you never knew. Maybe this is just how you were raised and you weren't raised in church. Nobody told you. But Christians don't live from a position of defense. We only play on the team of offense. Yeah. We don't live. We don't worship. We don't praise. We don't pray from a position of defense. We live from, we worship from, we praise from, and we pray from a position of offense. So many of us, we would try to fight these things on our own, in our own strength, on our own time frame. And what ends up happening is it overtakes us because you and I, we could never have been our own victors. If we could have been, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. That's right. If we could have been our own defenders, we wouldn't have needed Jesus. We have needed Jesus this entire time. So many Christians, we live in a place and we live from a position where you know what? God is our last resort. God is never our last resort. God is our resting place. We cannot live from a position of God being our last resort. He has to be our resting place. He has to be an indwelling on the inside of us. He is not a fire extinguisher that we break the glass out of in a time of need or a time of pain, but a time we're already in the furnace. God is not our just our rescuer. He is our resting place. Yeah. We already live from a rescue position. So why are you trying to live in a defensive posture? Yeah. You already live from a rescued position. So why are you trying to defend from a defensive position? Yeah. I appreciate anybody this morning. Because yeah. yeah, what ends up happening next is absolutely astounding. I love Shadrach, Meshach, and Benny. This moment in history with God and people who are sold out for Christ blows my ever-loving mind. This is such a fire-breaking, fire-breaker moment. It gives me so much hope and so much faith. Because what happens next is incredible. They are literally are positioned right before the furnace. And they yet again refuse to worship the golden statue. This is the perfect picture. This king is the perfect picture of what the enemy of your soul looks like. This moment, this is hell's playbook to break the breaker. Because here's the deal. If your oppressor can't get you to worship him, he'll manipulate you with fear. Yeah. If your oppressor can't get you to worship him, worship yourself, worship money, worship sex, worship some golden statue that you've you worshiped yourself. Like if he cannot get you to worship something other than God, get your attention on something other than God, if he can't do that, he will try to manipulate you with fear. The enemy will always try to get you to worship first, and if he can't get you to worship, he'll lead you away with fear. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, Matt? What do you mean? So often, in our walk with Jesus, as we're resisting, as we're fleeing temptation, as we're getting away from things, as we're getting around other people to stoke us up, as we're going to church, as we're serving, as we're doing the same, as we're praying for people of life, as we are living out the Great Commission in our life, when the enemy comes for you, and he will, because when you are heaven bound, hell wants to bind you. Yeah. When he comes for you, He's trying to make waves. He's trying to bring things up. He's trying to take you down. He will try to get you to worship Him. Worship something He's born over. And if He cannot do that, He will try to manipulate you with fear. Yeah. He will put you in a position to see the worst case scenario. Right. He will bring you to a place where it looks like it is imminent death. Yeah. Life has lost the fight. Fruit is not coming. He will bring you to that posture. He will bring you to that place. He will get you on your knees. And He will reveal to you what is in His hand. Friends, can I encourage you this morning? 
When your oppressor reveals what's in his hand, that's when you know you can stand. When your oppressor reveals to you what is in his hand, that's when you know you can stand. You want to know why? Because when the oppressor shows you what's in cancer's hand, when the oppressor shows you what's in depression's hand, when the oppressor shows you what's in the judge's hand, when the oppressor tells you what is in whatever is coming to give you ill intent to cause you harm, when it reveals what's in its hand, that's when you know you can stand. Why? Because what's in the oppressor's hand is smaller than what's in God's hand. Amen. Amen. What's in the oppressor's hand is smaller than what's in God's hand. Yeah. You got cancer, I got healing. Mm. You got fear, I got faith. Wow. Mm. Yeah. You got a mountain, I got a sea. Yeah. Oh, Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Yeah. Right. You got their past, I got their future. Yes, yeah. sir. Oh. You got their ex, I've got them. Yeah. Hey. So often we don't understand that we are not fighting from a place on the ground. We are fighting from a king that's above it all, oh, okay? Oh, when we begin to lead out of our own will, we will die in our own will. But when we fight from God's will, you will win in God's will. Yeah. Man. This is who our God is, is it not? Yeah. yeah. This is who our God is. You want to try and manipulate me with fear? My God has already won me with yeah. fear. Yeah. What's in your head? It ain't me. Yeah. It ain't my future. It ain't my marriage. That's right. It's not my single season. Mm. It's not my gifts. It's not my talent. Mm. You didn't pay for it. Mm. You didn't purchase it. I'm not on layaway. You can't buy me slowly, Satan. This is a fire breaker. Can I read to you one more portion of scripture? Yes. Because here's the next part. Here's the next part. Daniel 3, 19 through 26. Let me set this up. This is the next part of the story. Because this is important to the Christian walk because at this moment in time, we're expecting this Disney story where we get to avoid the furnace. God, I'm standing for you. You're going to absolve me from any sort of consequences of my oppressor. You're going to rescue me. Not realizing, again, you already live in rescue. Yeah, we do. You already live in rescue. Yeah, so even when you find yourself in the furnace, you are already rescued. Because we would love it. We love it. We're like, God, I'm standing for you. I'm fighting for you. I am praying. I am being obedient. You have my allegiance. I'm doing all of this for you. Surely you're going to rescue me. And often, that's exactly what happens. But also often, you still find yourself in the proverbial furnace where it's hotter than hell. And you're sweating. And you're doubting. And you're not sure you can remain. Mm. Here's what that looks like. Are you ready? Yeah. Daniel 3, 19 to 26. I'm going to go quickly. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. Became distorted with rage. This boy had a demon. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, throw them into a blazing furnace, so they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king, in his anger, had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie three men up and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look! Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed. And the fourth man? 
That fourth man looks like a god. Yeah. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace. And he shouted, Shadrach! Meshach! Abednego! Servants of the Most High God, come out! Come here! So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire. Friends, friends, it is no mistake. This is not a plot twist. When heaven has your attention, hell will try to get it. Yeah. When heaven has your attention, hell will vie for your attention. Yeah. And here's what happens. If your God is God before the furnace, He will be God with you in the furnace. Amen. If your God is God before the furnace, He will be God in the furnace. Amen. Friends, this is how this relationship with Jesus is supposed to work. This is exactly what it looks like, okay? You can go through hell and still get to heaven. Amen. Yeah. This is who He is. If He is God before the furnace, He will be God in the furnace. If He is God, listen here, if He is not God on the daily how can you expect him to be God in the fire? Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That's good. I'm not preaching to anybody. Yeah. Come on. I want God in the fire. Is he going to be God on the daily? Yeah. Is he going to be your security on the daily? Yeah. Is he going to be your provision on the daily? Yeah. Who is he to you? Is he everything? Yeah. Or is he nothing? Wow. Here's the deal. There's two things that I notice in this portion of Scripture. Two Amazing things that I just felt like we needed to hear today. This King Nebuchadnezzar says, All right, I'm going to bow and I'm going to worship my golden statue. My golden statue is not good enough for you. All right. All right. Turn that up seven times hotter. Seven times hotter. Than anybody else. Seven times hotter. We're going to make a statement. No gold filling is going to survive this one. We're making a statement. Every ounce, fiber, collected part of your being, every atom is going to be torched in this fire. There will be nothing, nothing left of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And this is exactly what the enemy wants to do to you. When heaven has your attention, you've got hell's attention. Yeah. And when that happens, don't be surprised that you come up against, what does it say? The strongest, baddest, biggest, most binding sergeants this guy had. Don't be surprised when you get heaven's, when heaven gets your attention that you get hell's attention, okay? Because life will come at you. Things will orchestrate against you. You will feel like you are being beaten down, bound and gagged, and taken and being thrown into the furnace by the biggest and baddest things that you have ever faced in your life. You ain't seen giants in the land until hell's had your attention. But what happens is the biggest, baddest dudes that work for King Nebuchadnezzar bound them up, beat them down, and toss them into a furnace. But because it was seven times hotter, what was meant to bind you was actually burned by you. <clears throat> wow. What was meant to bind God's chosen person was actually burned by God's choice. You see, only with God can fire get burned. Only with God can what is, called, what is causing to bound you and bind you can actually be broken for it. Yeah. This is an incredible moment where you can take assurance, where you can rest assured, where you can live and you can breathe, okay? When God is the air in your lungs before you find yourself in need of air, this is what your life will look like even when all the oxygen in the room is being consumed by the flames around you. If God is the air that you breathe, you will not be consumed while the room burns down. In fact, the very thing that put shackles on you, the very thing that brought shame upon you, 
the very one that filed the subpoena against you, the very thing that has been working overtime to break you, will be broken before you. The very thing that was made and was working so hard to burn you will be burned before you. Am I preaching to anybody? Yeah. Second thing I noticed, worship team, you can make your way up here. Second thing I noticed in this piece of scripture, King Nebuchadnezzar, he puts this, he puts this furnace seven times hotter. Seven times hotter than need be. This is incredible because seven, if you don't know any numerology in the Bible, seven means completion. Seven means perfect. Seven is not in there by mistake. Seven means it's finished. Seven is completion. Seven is perfection. The king Surely he must have known that he turned that up to the perfect heat. Surely he must know he got the perfect Fahrenheit going. Surely he must have understood that this was the most complete, hottest, perfect furnace there would ever be. That it could seriously burn something to absolutely nothing. But what happened? He thought he turned it up to seven, and his mission would be complete. But how many know when the enemy turns it up to seven, God's mission will be complete? Amen. Yeah. It's got to give you hope today, because here's the deal. King Nebuchadnezzar, he read the situation wrong. Just like your oppressor, your depression, your enemy, your temptation, whatever it is in your life, your boss, your ex, your situation has read the situation wrong. You want to know why? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. They weren't in there with the fire. The fire was in there with them. Yeah. They didn't get thrown into the fire. They already had a fire on the inside of them. Yeah. You see, Kevin Nebuchadnezzar, he, he jumps up. He looks on the inside. And all of a sudden, he doesn't just see three. But he sees four. Yeah. He sees four bodies. All in agreement. All in allegiance. All
that you would protect them. And even if, even if they did go into that fire and they did get burned up, you were still the God, the one true God, the God of miracles. Jesus said, whether we've been praying or we just started praying or we have to continue to pray before we see that miracle come, Father, if it's a custody battle, if it's a healing in our body, if it's a healing for a loved one, Jesus, if we, if we believe that that breakthrough is coming and we have the faith to receive it, Jesus, you are the God of all, all of those things. Lord, we hold on to you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Whether we're outside the fire or we're in the fire or we, are, we have gone through the fire, Jesus, your hand is on us in your mighty name. Father, I just pray for a blessing over your people right now. And if you have not, if you don't know this Jesus man, if you don't know that fourth man in the fire, I want to give you the opportunity right now. So everyone in this place, just lift your voices with me as I pray. Father God, we accept you. We acknowledge that you are the one true God. There are oppressors and there are idols and they are nothing compared to you. We surrender to you and we in turn cast those oppressors and idols into the fire. said.